The silence beneath, the unquiet whisper. The village of Echo's End was a whisper of a place, nestled between the embrace of the dense forest and the ancient catacombs that sprawled like silent veins beneath. It was a village that thrived on silence, especially when night fell like a cloak, heavy and absolute. Aria, with her rebellious streak as vivid as the fiery locks of hair that fell to her waist, found the silence oppressive, a chain rather than a blanket of comfort. It was during one such evening, as the last light of day gave way to the creeping shadows, that Arya's defiance found voice. "'Why must we be prisoners to this silence, Dad?' Arya asked, her voice a hushed whisper that still felt too loud in the quiet of their home. Her father, a man whose grief had aged him beyond his years, barely looked up from the meal he was mechanically consuming. "'It's for our safety, Arya. You know the rules. We've lived by them for generations.' "'But why?' she pressed, her green eyes alight with a mix of frustration and curiosity. "'What are we so afraid of? Have you ever heard it, Dad? Have you ever heard anything in the night?' Her father's eyes hardened, a storm brewing in their depths. "'Your curiosity isn't charming, Arya. It's dangerous. You think your mother's disappearance was a tale to scare children. It's real. The danger is real.' Eli, Arya's younger brother, watched their exchange with wide, fearful eyes. He was the quieter of the two, his imagination a fertile ground for the seeds of the village's horror stories to grow. Arya, please, he whispered, let's not anger it. It? Arya laughed, a sound that seemed too vibrant against the backdrop of their enforced silence. Eli, don't tell me you believe in those stories, a monster that feeds on sound. It's ludicrous. Eli shivered, pulling his blanket closer around his shoulders. Then why take the risk? Why do you need to question everything? Because it doesn't make sense, Arya exclaimed, quieter now, but with no less intensity. Our lives, bound by an ancient rule, with no reason. I need to know why, Eli. I need to know what happened to Mom. Their father stood abruptly, his chair scraping against the wooden floor, a sound that seemed a thunderclap in their silent world. Enough! he bellowed, then immediately winced, glancing around as if the very walls might betray them. Your mother was taken because she dared to ask the same questions. Is that what you want, Arya? To vanish into the night? Arya met her father's gaze, a defiant fire burning in her. Yes, she whispered back fiercely. If it means finding the truth then yes. Silence fell again, heavy and oppressive, a blanket that smothered their conversation. Eli looked between his sister and his father, torn between fear and a growing curiosity that mirrored Arya's. That night, as Arya lay in bed, the silence seemed to press against her windows, an unseen force that waited just beyond. She whispered to the night, a silent vow that she would uncover the secrets of Echo's end, that she would find out what lurked beneath the silence. And perhaps, in doing so, she would finally understand what had taken her mother from them, and why their world was bound by the tyranny of silence. The next morning dawned with a hush over Echo's end, the sun's rays slicing through the mist like whispers. Arya, Fueled by the unresolved tensions of the previous night, decided to take action. She approached Eli, who was cautiously tending to their small garden, the quiet around them almost tangible. Eli, we need to talk, Arya began, her voice low and serious. Eli straightened up, wiping his hands on his trousers. About last night? Arya, I don't think... No, not about that, she interrupted, her gaze steady. About finding out what's really happening here. I'm going to the catacombs. Eli's eyes widened in alarm. The catacombs? Are you out of your mind? We're not even supposed to mention them, let alone... I know, I know. But don't you see? There has to be a reason why everything about this village is centred around silence. And I think the answer is down there. Arya's determination was palpable. A force that seemed almost out of place in the tranquil garden... Eli looked around nervously, 
as if expecting the very air to rebuke them. But the stories, the entity that... Feeds on sound, yes. But have you ever questioned those stories, Eli? Doesn't it seem convenient? A perfect way to keep us all in line, don't you think? Eli pondered, the conflict evident on his young face. But what if it's true, Arya? What if you wake it up? Arya took a deep breath, her resolve hardening. Then I'll be quiet. I'll be so quiet. The dead themselves won't know I'm there. But I have to do this, Eli. I have to know if there's a connection to Mom's disappearance, and I need your help. Eli swallowed hard, the weight of the decision pressing down on him. What do you need me to do? Keep watch. If I'm not back by morning, you go to Dad. Tell him. Tell him I went looking for the truth. Eli nodded, a mixture of fear and admiration in his eyes. Okay, Arya, I'll do it. But please, be careful. Arya smiled, a bittersweet curve of her lips. Always am. As night began to fall, Arya made her preparations. Dressed in dark clothes and armed with a flashlight and a notebook, she felt like a shadow moving through the village. The silence was even more profound at night, a living entity that seemed to watch her every move. She reached the entrance to the catacombs, hidden beneath an old gnarled tree at the edge of the forest. The air was cooler here, the silence deeper, as if the earth itself was holding its breath. Taking a deep breath, Arya stepped into the darkness, the beam of her flashlight cutting through the gloom. The catacombs were a maze, their walls lined with ancient markings that seemed to dance in the light. As she ventured deeper, Arya could feel the weight of the earth above her, the centuries of silence that filled these halls. She paused occasionally to document her findings, the soft scratch of her pen, a stark contrast to the oppressive quiet. Hours passed, and Arya found herself lost in the labyrinth of the catacombs, each turn revealing more of the ancient secrets that had been buried beneath Echo's End. It was then, in the deepest part of the catacombs, that she stumbled upon a chamber. The chamber was vast, the walls adorned with intricate carvings that told the story of Echo's End, of a time when the village was bound by a pact with something ancient, something that demanded silence in exchange for protection. Arya's heart raced as she realised she was standing in the heart of the mystery. The truth of Echo's End laid bare before her. And as she turned to leave, eager to share her discovery with Eli, a sound stopped her cold. A whisper, soft and menacing, filled the chamber. A sound that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. Eli, she whispered, fear creeping into her voice. I think I found it. But Eli wasn't there to hear her words. Arya was alone, surrounded by the ancient silence of the catacombs and the whispering darkness that had begun to wake. As Arya stood frozen in the cavernous chamber, the whisper grew louder, morphing into a chorus of murmurs that seemed to echo from the bowels of the earth itself. The air around her vibrated with an unseen menace, the darkness palpable, as if alive with ancient secrets and forgotten lives. Arya's heart hammered against her ribs, fear and fascination warring within her. Who's there? She whispered into the darkness, her voice barely carrying. The whispers paused, a moment of silence that felt like a breath held too long, before resuming, more insistent. Arya realised then that the whispers weren't words, but a sound, a vibration that seemed to resonate with the very stones of the catacombs. Summoning her courage, Arya moved forward, her flashlight sweeping over the carvings that seemed to pulse with a life of their own. The beam landed on a mural depicting a shadowy figure surrounded by villagers in a pose of reverence, or perhaps fear. Below the figure, inscribed in the ancient stone, were symbols that Arya recognised from the villagers' oldest texts, Symbols that spoke of silence, sacrifice, and a guardian. The guardian? Arya murmured, tracing the symbols with her fingers. Is that what you are? Are you the guardian of this place? The whispers crescendoed at her words, and Arya felt a chill run down her spine. She took a step back, realising too late that the chamber was not as empty as she had thought. 
shadows detached from the walls, coalescing into forms that were human and yet not, figures that seemed to be made of darkness itself. Arya's breath caught in her throat as she backed away, the figures advancing with every step she took. I didn't mean to disturb you, she stammered, her back hitting a cold stone wall. I just... I need to find out what happened to my mother. The figures paused, and for a moment, the whispers softened. Arya felt the air shift, as if the chamber itself was listening, weighing her words. Why do you seek the past, child of silence? A voice echoed, not through the air, but inside her mind, a voice as ancient as the catacombs themselves. Arya swallowed hard, finding her voice. Because I believe the past holds the key to my future, to all of our futures. My mother vanished because she sought the truth. I need to know why. I need to know what demands our silence. The shadows seemed to consider her words, their forms wavering in the dim light. The truth is a burden, child. Some truths are buried for a reason, the voice intoned, a note of warning threading through its words. I'm willing to bear it. Arya replied, her determination steeling her against her fear. Please, I just want to understand. There was a pause, a tension in the air that felt like the calm before a storm. Then, one of the figures stepped forward, its form becoming clearer, more human. It was a woman, her features etched with the weight of centuries, eyes that had seen the rise and fall of empires. We were once like you, the woman began, her voice a whisper of leaves against stone, living above, under the sun, but we delved too deep, woke what should have remained asleep. Our sacrifice, our silence, was the price for our survival. Arya listened, her heart pounding, as the woman recounted the tale of Echo's End, of an ancient entity that dwelled beneath the earth, a guardian of incredible power that demanded silence in exchange for protection. The village's prosperity was tied to a pact, a pact that required sacrifice. And my mother? Arya asked, a lump forming in her throat. Was she a sacrifice? The woman's gaze was sorrowful. Your mother was chosen to be the guardian's voice, a link between the surface and the depths. But she sought to end the pact, to free us from our silence. In doing so, she awoke the guardian's wrath. Arya felt tears prick her eyes, the pieces of the puzzle falling into place. And now it's my turn, she said, a statement rather than a question. The woman nodded, the shadows around her beginning to fade. The guardian stirs, child. Your presence here has not gone unnoticed. You must leave before it fully awakens. Go back to the world of light and speak no more of what lies beneath. But I can't just leave! Arya protested, her voice rising in desperation. I need to find a way to end this. We can't live like this. I need to save us all. The woman's form was fading, dissolving back into the darkness. Seek the heart of silence, she whispered, her voice trailing off. Only there will you find what you seek. And then she was gone, leaving Arya alone with the silence and the ancient secrets of the catacombs. Arya stood there for a moment, her mind racing. The heart of silence, it sounded like a riddle, a clue left by the fading shadow. But what did it mean? Determined, Arya pressed on, deeper into the catacombs, guided by the faint whispers that seemed to beckon her forward. The passages narrowed, the air grew colder, and the oppressive silence weighed heavier with each step. It was as if the very stones were watching her, ancient guardians of the deep. After what felt like hours, Arya stumbled upon a chamber unlike any other. It was a vast, circular space, the walls lined with more carvings, these far more intricate and ominous. In the centre of the chamber stood a stone pedestal, and atop it, a crystal that pulsed with a soft, inner light. The heart of silence, Arya breathed, her voice echoing slightly in the chamber. She approached the pedestal cautiously, reaching out to touch the crystal. The moment her fingers brushed against the surface, the chamber lit up with a blinding light, 
and the silence was shattered by a sound so profound, so all-encompassing, that Arya fell to her knees, clutching her ears. It was as if the very earth was groaning, a sound of pain and anger that vibrated through her bones. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the sound ceased and the light dimmed. Arya looked up, her ears ringing, to find the chamber changed. The walls now depicted a new scene, the village above, thriving in harmony with the entity below, their prosperity linked to the silence they maintained. But one figure stood apart, a woman with a likeness so similar to her mother's that it took Arya's breath away. This was the story of her mother's rebellion, her attempt to break the pact and free the village from its silent servitude. Arya stood, her resolve hardening. I will finish what you started, Mum, she whispered into the silence. I will free us. But as she turned to leave, a voice stopped her, not the whisper of before, but a voice clear and cold as ice. And what makes you think you can succeed where your mother failed? Arya spun around to face the source of the voice. Emerging from the shadows at the edge of the chamber was a figure, tall and imposing, its form shrouded in darkness. The Guardian, Arya said, her voice steady despite the fear that clenched her heart. Yes, the figure replied, its voice echoing off the stone walls. I am the keeper of the pact, the guardian of the silence. Your mother sought to defy me, to break the bonds that have protected your people for centuries, and now you wish to follow in her footsteps. Arya squared her shoulders, facing the entity with a defiance born of desperation. The pact is a prison. You feed on our fear, keep us bound in silence. There has to be another way. The guardian laughed a sound that sent shivers down Arya's spine. You do not understand the forces you meddle with, child. Your actions have consequences. Your presence here, your noise, it has awakened the depths, and they are hungry. Arya felt a chill run through her, the air in the chamber growing colder. What do you mean? What's coming? The guardian stepped forward, the darkness around it swirling. The pact was not just for our benefit, it was a seal, a lock keeping the true darkness at bay. And you, with your reckless quest for truth, have undone it. Arya's heart sank as the realization dawned on her. This was bigger than her, bigger than the village. What have I done? she whispered, horror struck. The guardian's eyes glowed in the dim light, a predatory gleam. You have opened the door, Arya, and now they are coming. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Arya looked around the chamber, at the stories carved into the stone, at the legacy of silence and sacrifice. She thought of her brother, of her father, of the village that lay in unknowing peril above. She had sought the truth, but not for it to be the end of everything they knew. I will fix this, Arya declared, though she did not know how. I will find a way to seal the darkness again, and I will free us from this silence. The Guardian watched her, its form beginning to fade back into the shadows. We shall see, Arya. We shall see if you possess the strength to bear the silence, to face the darkness you have unleashed. And with that, the Guardian was gone, leaving Arya alone once more, the weight of her task, a task far greater and more terrifying than she had ever imagined, bearing down on her, the air in the chamber felt heavier, as if charged with a foreboding sense of urgency. Arya knew time was of the essence. Whatever darkness she had unwittingly unleashed was coming, and she had to act fast to protect her village, her family, and perhaps even the world beyond Echo's End. Gathering her courage, Arya retraced her steps through the catacombs, the weight of her mission solidifying with each step. The silence was no longer just an oppressive force. It was a warning, a reminder of the delicate balance she had disrupted. Emerging from the catacombs as dawn began to paint the sky with hues of gold and crimson, Arya made her way back to the village. The streets were still, the villagers unaware of the danger that lurked beneath their feet. She found Eli waiting for her at the edge of the village, his face etched with worry. 
At the sight of her, his expression morphed into relief, then back to concern as he took in her determined yet haunted gaze. Arya, you're back, Eli breathed, rushing to her side. What happened? Did you find anything? Arya nodded, her resolve firm. I found more than I bargained for, Eli. We're in danger, all of us. The silence, it was protecting us from something much worse. Eli's eyes widened in fear. Worse? What do you mean? Arya explained as quickly as she could, the story pouring from her in a desperate rush, about the ancient entity, the pact, her mother's role as the guardian, and the darkness she had inadvertently awakened. We need to warn the others, Eli said, his voice trembling. We need to prepare. No, Eli, Arya said, placing a hand on his shoulder. The villagers won't understand. They'll panic. We need a plan, something to stop what's coming. But what can we do? Eli asked, his helplessness mirroring the fear in Arya's heart. Arya took a deep breath, the weight of her next words heavy on her tongue. I need to go back, she said, determination lacing her voice. I need to confront the Guardian again, find a way to seal the darkness. Eli shook his head, his fear for his sister evident. Arya, no, it's too dangerous. There has to be another way. There isn't, Eli, Arya replied, her gaze steely. This is my fault, and I need to fix it, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. Eli looked at her, torn between his fear and his desire to help. What do you need me to do? Arya outlined her plan, a risky endeavour that would require precision and, above all, silence. They would return to the catacombs together, armed with knowledge and the hope that they could appeal to the Guardian's sense of duty to protect, to persuade it to help them seal the darkness once more. Eli nodded, his resolve hardening alongside Arya's. Okay, Arya, we'll do it together. For Mom, for everyone. With their plan set, Arya and Eli prepared to descend once more into the darkness. The village of Echo's End stirred to life, oblivious to the two siblings who stood at the brink of a battle, not just for their lives, but for the very soul of their village. As they made their way to the entrance of the catacombs, Arya couldn't help but feel the weight of their task. They were about to face an ancient force with nothing but their wits and their will. We can do this, Eli, Arya said, her voice a whisper that carried the weight of their world. We have to. Eli nodded, his hand finding hers in the dim light. Together, he whispered back. And with that, the siblings stepped into the shadows of the catacombs, the silence enveloping them once more, a silent testament to the gravity of their quest. The darkness ahead was palpable, but so was their determination. For in their hearts burned the hope that they could restore the balance, seal the darkness, and perhaps in doing so, find the peace that had eluded Echo's end for generations. Arya and Eli ventured deeper into the catacombs than they had ever dared to go before. Their path was lit only by the faint glow of Arya's flashlight, casting long shadows against the ancient walls. The air grew colder, denser, as if the darkness itself was closing in around them. We're getting close, Arya whispered, her voice barely audible over the sound of their careful footsteps. Eli nodded, his own fear a tangible thing in the dark. What will you say to it? To the Guardian? Arya paused, considering her words carefully. I'll tell it the truth, that we need its help, that the balance of silence and sound has been broken, and we need to restore it before it's too late. They reached the chamber where Arya had confronted the Guardian before, the air inside charged with an unseen energy. Taking a deep breath, Arya stepped forward, calling out into the darkness. Guardian, we have come to seek your aid. The darkness is unleashed, and we must seal it away once more. The chamber remained silent, the tension building until the air itself seemed to pulse. Then the Guardian appeared, its form more solid, more imposing than before. You return, child of silence, it said, its voice resonating through the chamber. You who have broken the pact, why should I aid you? 
because if you don't, the darkness will consume everything, Arya replied, her voice steady despite the fear coursing through her veins. Not just the village, but everything. The balance must be restored, and I believe you want that as much as we do. The Guardian regarded her, its gaze piercing through the gloom. And what do you propose? Arya explained their plan, how they intended to use the sound-absorbing stones found in the catacombs to create a barrier, a new seal, to contain the darkness. But we need your strength, your knowledge to make it work. Please, help us save our home. The Guardian was silent for a long moment, contemplating her words. Then slowly it nodded. Very well, but know this, the seal will require a sacrifice. A Guardian must stand watch, forever bound to the silence. Arya's heart sank, understanding the magnitude of what was being asked. I am prepared, she said, her resolve firm. No, Arya, Eli interjected, stepping forward. It should be me. You've done enough. Let me do this. Tears welled in Arya's eyes as she turned to her brother. Eli, I can't let you. It's my choice, Arya, Eli said, his voice filled with a quiet strength. This is how I can protect you, protect all of us. The Guardian observed their exchange, then finally spoke. So be it. Prepare the seal. Together, they worked under the Guardian's direction, placing the stones in a precise pattern around the chamber. As they worked, the whispers of the darkness grew louder, a cacophony of sounds that seemed to push against the very walls of the catacombs. With the pattern complete, the Guardian began to chant, a sound that was both beautiful and terrifying. The stones glowed, their light intensifying until the chamber was bathed in brilliance. Step into the centre, Eli, the Guardian instructed. Eli looked at Arya, a smile of peace and resolve on his face. Take care of Dad for me, he whispered before stepping into the light. Arya reached out, her fingers grazing Eli's before the light enveloped him, sealing him away. The chamber shook, the sound of the darkness howling in rage as the seal was completed. Then, silence. The Guardian turned to Arya, its form beginning to fade. The balance is restored, thanks to your sacrifice. Remember, the silence must be preserved. Arya nodded, tears streaming down her face as she looked at the spot where her brother had stood. Thank you, Eli, she whispered into the silence. She emerged from the catacombs alone, the weight of their sacrifice heavy on her heart. The village of Echo's End was safe, the darkness contained once more, but at a cost Arya would never forget. As she made her way home, the first rays of dawn breaking over the horizon, Arya knew the silence would never be the same. It was now a testament to Eli, to their mother, to all those who had stood guard over the darkness beneath. Echo's End would remain a village of silence, but now... It was a silence filled with the echoes of sacrifice, of love, and of an unbreakable bond between siblings who had faced the darkness and prevailed.